Hi, everybody, and welcome to Grenfell Talk, the uh, interactive web show that gives you a little bit of insight into what it's like to be a student here at Grenfell Campus. Tonight, uh, we're very lucky to be, to be joined by uh, some wonderful people from uh, some of our environmental programs here at Grenfell. My name is Tom Cocker, and I work with the Office of Student Recruitment. And uh, tonight, we're broadcasting live from our wonderful little studio in the uh, Office of Student Recruitment. And with me is Mr. Stephen Decker. Thanks for coming out tonight, Stephen. No problem at all. Glad so, to be here. Uh, Stephen is the chair of the Environmental Studies program, and also here with us tonight is uh, Dr. Don Roger Parkinson, the chair of the Environmental Science program, and we'll uh, be chatting with him a little bit later. Um, so, but before we get to environmental science, environmental studies. Yeah. So, and, and maybe even before we get into uh, what the Environmental Studies program is, um, I kind of want to know a little bit more about you before okay. we actually dig into that. So why don't you tell me a little bit about like where you went to school? Sure. I went to school here. Um, <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. my undergraduate degree is in environmental studies, which I finished back in 2004. Mm -hmm. Seems like a long time ago. Now. <laughs> and uh, when I finished my undergraduate degree, I went to the St. John's campus where I did a master's degree in geography. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, onto a PhD. Uh, PhD started at Wilfrid Laurier University, and then I moved to uh, University of British Columbia with my supervisor. Mm -hmm. My PhD is in interdisciplinary studies. So a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Which I, I it's which is a neat road, I think, you know, especially coming back to environmental studies now because I started in, in environmental studies. Yeah. Had some good good times with geography and now back to an interdisciplinary PhD program, which yeah. relates directly to environmental studies again. So So uh, what sort of work are you doing in your PhD? Uh, my research is focused on <laughs> the human dimensions of wildlife management. So I, I, I'm in, really interested in wildlife management, uh, but from the social science perspective. So uh, my research looks at perceptions, attitudes, values, levels of support and opposition mm -hmm. for wildlife management strategies or regarding particular wildlife management spe or wildlife species. Cool. Yeah. Anything in particular? Any species in particular? Uh, most of my work's been focused on European bison, which is okay. really the, the cousins of the American buffalo, which yeah. a lot of people know. Uh, but neat thing about European bison, or perhaps the not such a good thing is that there's only about 2,500 of them left in the world. Wow. Um, and there's just a few small pockets in Western European countries where, uh -huh. where they live. And um, so the projects that I've been working on are reintroduction projects, so bringing mm -hmm. them back to their former range. And from a social science perspective, that's an interesting thing to do. These animals weigh 2,000 pounds. You know, yeah. they're, they've got horns. They can yeah. run 45 kilometers an hour, and we're right. bringing them back to... Western Europe, you know, right. some of the most like, densely populated countries right. in, People in, might in the think continent. So. These things are dangerous. Why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's some questions like that yeah. that uh, that need to be addressed. Um, so that's what most of my work, work is focused on. For my PhD work, I, I'm my, my work is focused here at home in Newfoundland, Labrador, where I'm looking at caribou management. Okay. So, yeah. Do you see it? Is there a tie? Is there other links between the there the are bison management yeah and there are management? some ways. Um, our concept of wilderness and wildlife management in North America is somewhat different than what it is in Western mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, just because of human-dominated landscapes and how much room we have yeah. uh, here in North America. But there are some parallels, for sure. sure. Yeah, and it's always interesting to uh, to kind of transplant some some techniques across the pond, across the Atlantic, to, to see how they work in different areas. Cool. That's yeah. interesting. That That's that's awesome. Yeah, um, it's fun. Yeah. Okay, so rating it in, I guess, for to... Can we use that term in terms of, can we use that as a sure, pun on, on wildlife management? Yeah. management? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Raining that in uh, to, to here at Grenfell um, and into the environmental studies program. Um, can you, you know, in uh, you know, a minute maybe, give me a pitch, give me that like little pitch on what the environmental studies program is. Okay. Um, well, maybe a good way, to, good way to talk about it. When I started my PhD work, mm -hmm. uh, my supervisor, Kevin Hanna, sat down on the first day and he said, uh, Stephen, you know, these resource and environmental management problems that we're facing are fairly complex, right? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, they are. You know, there's, there's, they're, they're quite, a, kind of hard to solve. And he said, well, doesn't it make sense that the solutions to those problems are also going to be fairly complex? No, no simple answers. I said, yeah, that makes sense. I agree with that. So he said, you're in the right place where you're working with the right person. Yeah. And in environmental studies, we use uh, an interdisciplinary perspective. So we, we take information from a variety of different disciplines, a, a big range of disciplines. You know, we're talking about information from uh, religious studies, information from folklore, anthropology, um, political science, geography, you know, um, economics, all that information that, that comes to bear on resource and environmental management. In order to solve these problems, we need an interdisciplinary perspective. 
So that's what we try to provide our students with, uh, a really rich understanding of, of all the different considerations for, for trying to address these issues. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So <clears throat> if, if a student is interested in, in, if that's sort of something that piques their interest, um, you know, then that's a lot. Of, sure. That's a big, wide range. Right. So um, if someone's maybe sitting at home and they're thinking, you know, that's that sounds really cool. Um, and then maybe then they're at, then the next question is, well, what does that mean? Like, what are they actually going right. to do when they when they do the, like what sorts of topics maybe is, right. is the best question? Well, to, to make it a little bit uh, less general, but still somewhat general, we, we, what we tend to look at is environmental studies looks at the the way that humans interact with the natural environment. So all the negative parts, like the you know pollution, uh, population growth, resource yeah. exploitation, so that, lots of negative things. Yeah. But um, we also, in environmental studies, we like to look at ways that we can help solve those problems, like fostering stewardship, yep. trying to foster uh, an environmental ethic, uh, focus on environmental education, talking about uh, nature conservation policies. And we also make the connection, again, with environmental policy. So if we have identified problems, then how do we go about solving them? Mm -hmm. And uh, what's neat in environmental studies is that some of our students, several of our students have gone on to to uh, enroll in the master's program in environmental policy, which we have here at Renful. Yeah. Uh, so it is a good, provides a decent basis, I think, to, to move into the environmental policy program at the graduate level. Cool. Well, there's, of course, the, uh, so a student, if they're interested in, in this area, um, you know, in the first year, you get exposed to a, quite a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. um, right, at the, right from the beginning, we do introductory courses in geography, which looks at um, not only physical geography, but also lots of other considerations as well, like global climate change and population growth. We have an introductory course in environmental studies. And the way the way that I've been teaching the introductory environmental studies course, I've kind of compartmentalized it so that the first part of the course is talking about challenges. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, students are starting to get a little bit depressed. So then we <laughs> focus the rest of the semester on solutions to right. try to try yeah. to address those issues. Yeah. And that's, you know, and I think it's a good introduction to the whole program of, of environmental studies because we are looking at the challenges, but also, okay, we're going to make the decision makers of the future to try to address these problems. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so what, if, if that's sort of your first year, I guess, as you go on in the program, do you kind of get deeper into some of those issues or, or do you take more, uh, look at more types of issues? How does that work? Um, in some cases, the courses get a little bit more specialized as we move on. Mm -hmm. So as we move on, we got courses that are just focused on environmental policy, mm -hmm. for instance courses that just focus on environmental impact assessment, right. which is a, a really kind of necessary skill. Yeah. Courses in geographical information system, which again is a necessary skill yeah. in our area. Um, but also more general courses, when we get up into the fourth year, we have uh, our seminar courses, which you know requires students to kind of bring all this information together, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's a, a good, what we call capstone course, right? Yeah. The, the culminating course where you can really say, okay, I'm, I'm looking at environmental issues, and how can I apply what I've learned over yeah. these last four years to try to address these issues and look at them in a different way. Right, and so they, they kind of pick an issue or a topic or something and, and do a, some, a lot more intense Yeah, depending on, on how, the, how the seminar is run, um, sometimes there's a particular theme, a yeah. really general theme, like it could be fisheries, right, yeah. So or uh, agriculture. or or um, I know when I taught seminar before, my theme was interdisciplinary studies or integrative approaches. Like, okay, so how do we integrate information from the natural sciences mm -hmm. with the social sciences. So if, if we're looking at a wildlife management issue, how can I take information from population ecology and wildlife biology? That's essential for good decision making. But how do I incorporate that with some of the economic considerations for this wildlife management strategy? Yeah. And the two fit together to make you know good management at the, at the end of the day. Cool. So um, what are some uh, topics or projects that people have worked on maybe in the past couple of years that, that stand out in your head? Right. Well, this semester we've got uh, six students that are preparing to graduate, so they're working on their final projects. Mm -hmm. um, again, a big range of projects. I know we've got one student that's looking at um, environmental initiatives on campuses across Canada. Okay. So essentially looking at uh, similar sized campuses across Canada and looking at you know what are the type of environmental initiatives that they're following and how could they be incorporated here at Grenfell. Mm -hmm. um, another student that's interested in ways that social media can help address invasive species, which is an interesting take. Uh, so students may be aware that uh, uh, green crab is a big issue in Atlantic Canada. It's an invasive species, mm -hmm. it's causing all kinds of problems problems ecologically, but also uh, from an economic perspective. Um, so one of my students is interested in looking at how, well, 
citizen science, how you know local fishers and local people can actually gather information about green crab and then use social media to get this information to researchers so they cool. can better document you know how far yeah. fast and how far the crab is spreading. Uh, another student is interested in looking at ways to reduce the number of moose vehicle collisions on our province's highways. Um, again, another student looking at the fisheries management issues and and some of the policy changes around that. Uh, so a variety of different variety that's, of different topics. That's sure. excellent. Yeah. So um, so the students are doing all this stuff and and they're working on these really intense projects. And then um, what are some of the things that you, maybe you can say uh, or tell people who are watching? What are some of those grads doing? Um, so some of the graduates uh, from environmental studies, well, some, a couple that come to mind right away that have gone on to graduate school, gone mm -hmm. on to do a master's. I know uh, a couple of students that have finished their environmental studies degree and gone on to do a degree in geography because the two, two it's a nice fit. Yeah. Um, I know one of the students that uh, that I taught all the way up through his environmental studies degree. Now he's gone on to do his master's of arts and environmental policy. Mm -hmm. So here at Grenfell again. And uh, he's actually working with me on a research project in the Netherlands uh, based on European bison. Cool. Again, um, some of the other students that have gone into the workforce after they finished, um, we've got students. I remember one of our graduate students is working as a sustainability coordinator for a company up in Nova Scotia. So essentially she looks at the, the inputs and outputs for the entire company and uh, proposes ways and, and investigates policies to try to make the company more sustainable, mm -hmm. environmentally sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've got students that work in uh, resource conservation with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. I think the environmental studies program is also a great basis to work with environmental, non-governmental organizations, mm -hmm. ENGOs, because I think that having that you know interdisciplinary perspective, being able to have some understanding of the natural sciences, but also being able to understand some of the economic and policy ramifications of these issues, I think right. that's that'd be an important role for an advocate or right. someone that heads up an environmental, non-governmental organization. Right. Sort of be able to like translate between the two maybe? yeah it's right yeah. to be that intermediary oftentimes yeah. yeah that's right yeah cool that's awesome thank you so much no uh, thank you for coming down uh, if you're interested in learning more about uh the environmental studies program uh or if you want to come if you want to have a chat with steven yeah. uh, we can arrange it uh, check out the website grenfell.mun.ca or send us an email uh, study at grenfell.mun.ca and we'll be happy to uh, to set that up. Sure, uh, please do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a quick 30 second break. Uh, we're going to do a changeover and uh, we'll be back in a second. Thanks so much. Okay. <clears throat> All right, welcome back. Thanks for watching again. This is uh, watching Grenfell Talk. We just talked with Stephen Decker from the Environmental Studies Program here at Grenfell Campus. And now we're really lucky to, ha lucky to have Dr. Don Roger Parkinson with us. And Don Roger is the chair of the Environmental Science Program here at Grenfell. That's right? That's correct. Thank you. Thanks. I think I'm the lucky one, actually. Oh, so. well, I'm flat. <laughs> Being at Grenfell. This, this is going well already. Um, Okay, so again, before we get into the, the nitty gritty details sure. about the program, um, why don't you give us and, and our viewers a little bit of an insight into maybe where you went to school and some of the, the research that you've done? Uh, wow, I hope you got lots of time. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I wasn't a straight through uh, sort of a graduate student. I, I started off at a university called Brock University in Ontario uh -huh. and did a, a degree there. Um, in environmental, uh, well, it was chemistry, I guess, in physics. Mm -hmm. um, before, I, I wanted to do a, a music degree and got accepted at Western, but I took a long time to decide on. Really? Um, I don't think I just didn't think that I could, you know, stay alive being a musician. Okay. So I thought I'd better get a backup plan and what then was your concentrate. Was piano? Okay. Yeah, I was the class of pianist. Yeah. Do you still yeah. play? 
I still play. That's yeah, awesome. I still have three or four pianos laying around. Nice. Oh, yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, after getting an honors degree in, at Brock, I, I took some time off and traveled uh, the world for about a year and a half um, after working uh, a couple of years at uh, Steel Company of Canada mm -hmm. and went from Nordcap, Norway, down to Chad mm -hmm. and uh, or Porto, uh, Portugal, all the way over to Baghdad. Wow. Uh, by by vehicle and traveling with people and stuff like that. Wow. I came back after that year and a half. Uh, uh, that was when the Itola sort of dates me, I guess, took <laughs> over and uh, almost had to smuggle my body who got shot in the leg oh, out of Tehran wow. under the cover of night. Uh, so I didn't end up in uh, jail or, or the guy was pretty serious. Wow. Yeah. He's okay. He got back to okay. England okay. And Good. I was fine. Good. Anyway, I came back and worked at Stelco, Steel Company of Canada in Hamilton as a metallurgist for about eight years based on my training mm -hmm. and really didn't like it. It was sort of like Charles Dickens, you know, workhouses, uh, yeah. lots of dirt yeah, and smoke yeah, and stuff yeah. and nasty stuff. <laughs> so I understand, I understand the world of pollutants type of thing. Yeah. And so I ended up going back to England because I had a lot of opportunities there. And then I taught for a private boys' school, um, grades, uh, I guess, what would be equivalent to about 11 to grade 12 here mm -hmm. and for about two years. And then ended up working in a university, University of London. And after working three or four years there, I decided to do a, a, a master's and a PhD mm -hmm. at another uh, school. Uh, University of London has about six colleges, mm -hmm. uh, all about five or 6,000 people, mm -hmm. you know, including bigger ones like Imperial College, right. which has a really yeah. big school, yeah. and uh, University College and all that sort of stuff. But we, I was at a, a Bedford College originally, and, and then Royal Holloway College, which are used to be schools for the women, the first women to be able to go to oh, university okay. in London yeah. um, because they couldn't go to Cambridge and Oxford at the time, mm -hmm. so they started the University of London. And, of course, those were the original schools, and eventually that was blossomed up to let male in and mm -hmm. had co-ed dorms all the time by the time yeah. I was there and everything. So I ended up doing my uh, Ph.D. at Queen Mary College as, as well as working uh, full time, so that was uh, cool. six or seven years by the time I finished that, and then worked in Spain for uh, chemical microscopy. Then came over back to University at Tufts yeah. in, in Boston yeah. uh, as a spectroscopist, and uh, did a lot of analyzing with uh, all different types of techniques. Then I decided I'd like to come back to Canada, so I worked at Bishop's University. And then I saw this advertisement in Newfoundland, which is a, a province I had never been to before, though my grandfather had, uh, was in the First World War with a bunch of the uh, uh, Newfoundland Regiment uh, oh, way wow. back when and had buddies up visiting in the summer cottages because yeah, yeah. he had a place up in North Bay, Ontario, yeah. which I spent most of my younger life looking after and fixing his cottages, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being a grandson, you yeah, know how course. life goes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I saw this ad at Grenfell that said, oh, they're starting this environmental chemistry and environmental biology program that's science-based. And I said, oh, I want to be a part of that. It is, it's very rare you get to be a, a part of a startup of a new discipline yeah. right from the ground stage. Yeah. I thought, wow, this is really a, a, really a nice opportunity. I'm going to try for that. And by luck, I, I got here. And here you are. And I've been here for 20, almost 20 years in August. So... You weren't kidding that it's a, it's a winding path through I there. told you. I, <laughs> That's fascinating. I left out most of the juicy parts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get those later. Um, okay, so so let's okay, let's come back down here with the um, The environmental science program that you helped start. Yes. Can you give us a, a short, you know, uh, for students watching at home and they're interested in science and, and they can probably tell by the name that it's, you know, you're looking at environmental aspects of, of sure. science. Can you give them a quick pitch on, on what the program's about? Certainly, this program is one of the is the oldest in Atlantic Canada, and probably one of the few in Canada and North America that is really truly science based. Which because a lot of them have it to be a sort of humanities, social science based, mm -hmm. but this is a science based, and we did this for a purpose. The uniqueness of I guess of this program is that. 
Let me use an example. When I started up, uh, I was originally hired here as the analytical chemist and part of the environmental chemistry program, which meant looking after all the instrumentation, buying it, and setting up and writing the labs. So the way that was designed was I wrote about 250 letters to different companies right. and said, what would you like, if you're going to hire one of our students, what would you like them to be really well trained in? Right. And of all those responses I got back, and I got very many responses back, we decided on the labs, the types of labs. Mm -hmm. And that's how the whole program was really put together wow. with an orientation to, to utilization of the program, mm -hmm. to go on to graduate school if one wanted to without having to do any extra years. But really sort of that, inf um, that I guess, uh, synergy between education, uh, training, and also outcome in terms of job. Wow. So you actually got... The, the outcomes for the program, the goals of the program, actually from industry. Well, that's how I did my degree, uh, or lab courses, and yeah. the, the types of how, what the focus would be for the, uh, for the lab courses and the courses that I teach. And I know a number of professors, um, both biology and chemistry, yeah. have sort of went along that same line. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, so there's a, there's a biology stream and a chemistry stream. So yeah, they're pretty look? different, actually. Although we fall under the umbrella of environmental science, there is a two streams, environmental chemistry and environmental biology. Um, I'm a chemist. I'll, I'll start with uh, alphabetically, biology. Environmental bio the difference between, I guess, a, chem a biology and environmental biology is that in a true biology degree, you end up doing a lot of um, lab courses in genetics mm -hmm. and uh, molecular chemistry. Uh, uh, cell biology, mm -hmm. uh, molecular biology. I think, uh, whereas here the major uh, focus is on ecology okay. and applied systems, yeah. and are very much applied to field work and to uh, as opposed to just laboratory work. Mm -hmm. Chemistry has the same sort of idea. Um, chemistry, rather than doing just pure chemistry, which you end up a lot of theor theoretical chemistry and quantum computing and all that sort of stuff, which is great for pharmaceuticals and, and, and strategies in terms of synthesis, mm -hmm. but we do a much more uh, applied type of uh, uh, approach. We are much more real samples, field work. So if you're interested in going out in the field, getting some real samples and analyzing them and really trying to look at the environment, then this perhaps this is the type of program for you, whether it's biology, if you like um, uh, looking at uh, mating habits or, or progressions of animals or uh, limnology and, uh, and the ecosystems and the biomarkers for, uh, for the environment, or whether you're trying to understand pesticides and the reactions or or doing some analytical de analytical detections for these very very uh, ubiquitous but and very very low level concentrations, then perhaps environmental chemistry is for you. Cool. So that's, that's really what the difference is, and this is where our focus is. That's that's fascinating. Okay, so so if uh, if if someone's like, oh, that's definitely what I want to do. Yeah. Else, yeah. What what would their actual, you know, um, if they come in in their first year? Yeah. What sort of stuff would they actually be doing? In that well, first, there is a, the first there the, the 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 two years I think are virtually the same as a chemistry and a biology program. Mm -hmm. So they take the really two, first two years are in biology, first two years, first two years, well, chemistry program. So at the end of that, if they decide that really don't like this way it's going, they they can do right into biology and right, right. into chemistry right. without like, skipping a beat. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we get transfer hopefully and more hopefully, uh, from the other uh, standard programs into yeah. our programs. But after that, but I guess the other difference is that um, we, uh, all of us in terms of biology and chemistry at first year and second year would take uh, an extra props earth science course. Um, so everybody does first year biology, first year chemistry, earth science, and first year math mm -hmm. and physics as well. After that, the in second year, we do take uh, one or two courses in biology and chemistry, chemistry and biology, depending on which stream you're in. Right. But then we sort of diverge a bit and then focus in our 
own areas mm -hmm. and then sort of come back together again in terms of a 4,000 seminar at the right. fourth year and also research projects, which right. are we have a very applied and wide range of. So what sort of stuff are people doing in that, that fourth year research project? Oh, wow. They've, they've, well, we've been going since 1997, right. so, and we've had about 350 people through. Right. So there's right? a lot. And about uh, thirty percent. Well, we have about twenty percent on average is honors student. Mm -hmm. More in chemistry and honors than in biology, as it turns out, to be about twice as many that do want to do honors in chemistry as opposed to do honors in biology, mm -hmm. which is a uh, which is just uh, based on marks, but an extra extra couple of courses at fourth year level, right. and it's a distinction on the degree. And if you can get your seventy five percent, I I strongly advise everybody to try to do that, right? Because you must believe that Marx is really money, uh, basically. <laughs> At the end and of it, yeah. um, it, it, that special demarcation of, of if you can do honors, then really um, um, helps beat back the crowd of people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's less people that can do that, and therefore you have greater opportunity to work in the field mm -hmm. and also direct access to graduate school if you want to do it right after, yeah. or maybe 10 years like I did. Yeah. You know? And so speaking of, of both go, going work into work or going yeah. to grad school, um, what are some recent alumni doing? Well, our first graduate students, we have a PhD student that works at the University of Texas at El Paso. He's an yeah. associate professor. Okay. And he's got about 50 or 60 papers published to his name. Wow. We've got a number, uh, we've got another, uh, we've got in chemistry, there's been about five people that have got, gone on to the PhD, mm -hmm. and maybe 15 or 16 have gone on to masters. Here, I'm just ballparking. Sure. In biology, I don't know yet if there has been a, a true PhD student, but there certainly have been a number of master students mm -hmm. going on. But what they do? Oh, they work uh, in in uh, Bombay uh, uh, research fields, yeah. uh, uh, the, 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 the great national parks uh, here mm -hmm. all through the island, yeah. uh, where it's Terra Nova or, or Gross Morn here. Yeah. Um, if you're a chemist, you can work in the Maxim Analytical. In fact, a number of our, 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 every year we get a number of our employers phoning up and say, boy, do you have 10 more like them? <laughs> we can really hire them because we really like you guys. There you go. They'll you get know? 10 more. Yeah. It's, I mean, really, I mean, we've got a lot of preferred uh, hiring status with a number of companies, which means essentially we don't get, uh, we can see the ads before they come out. Right. And so that if we get anybody that's that's coming up or these usually permanent jobs, but sometimes there's summer jobs yeah. as well. I mean, we've had really nice people that have really helped us, like Health Canada mm -hmm. in St. John's has hired a couple of summer students Excellent. to on trial, and they've, they've liked it. Excellent. And we've always said, now you got to do really well if you're going for a summer job for, yeah. because you're representing the rest of us that yeah. are coming behind you, right? Yeah. So if you mess up, then they'll never <laughs> talk to us again. So please don't mess up. <laughs> and I'm sure they do fantastic. And they do fantastic. And like I say, we got employers back asking us, can we have 10 more? You know, That's awesome. So, well, it is awesome for a, a t very tight, almost dry in employment situation. Yeah. Um, North America doesn't have, or Canada particularly, doesn't have, lot, have a lot of science uh, jobs at areas and stuff like that. But they have a lot of government positions, and we've had um, um, a number of students in the acid rain program of, mm -hmm. uh, of Memorial, uh, sorry, of, of uh, Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had federal people working in federal institutes and labs. Of course, we have the huge cadre of people that go out to Alberta and do well. And mm -hmm. they can, but they can work indoor in the labs. They don't always have to be out in the weather when it's right. minus forty-five. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, that's difficult out there. But um, uh, you don't necessarily have to go out there if you if you're not well connected out there. Sure. It's, it can be quite daunting and maybe quite quite dangerous. You yeah. know. Because a lot of money brings a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So it's nicer to have the opportunities to work in other places, yeah. such as your own province. Yeah. Now, you may not be in Corner Book, though we've had a number of people that still are working in Corner Book on permanent jobs with uh, the various uh, analytical firms and environmental firms. But a lot of people are in St. John's area and Gander and also way up north in Nuevic, yeah. Nuvic, Nuvic, sorry, and Labrador and... 
uh, through the states. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, um, just just to close, if if you're interested in studying the environment and and you're much more on a science lean um, than the environmental studies program that we talked about earlier. Yeah, come uh, by, have a chat. Come by, uh, sit down. We'll show you around campus. You have a chat with Don Roger, and I'm uh, an AS two three seven. So. There you go. You can just drop by. Uh, check out our website. Oh, I'm going to put up the uh, the website address: uh, grenfell.mun.ca. Uh, fire us an email: study at grenfell.mun.ca, and that'll come to me, and I'll quickly pass you on to uh, to Don Roger. Thank you so much for coming by. It's a pleasure. I really enjoyed pleasure it. Pleasure to you guys. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.